Welcome to my study today. I'm going to talk about the language we use to describe a graph. You might have to do that in a presentation, or you might be taking the IELTS examination. But I show you how to break the language down to make it a little bit easier to talk about graphs. At the end of the video, there is a true false exercise for you to practice. So let's get started. There are many sorts of graphs, as I've illustrated here, but they all do one thing. They let us have a visual representation of the data that we've prepared, and it makes it easier to understand. So let's take a closer look at the language we would use to describe what we are actually looking at. Here's a bar graph showing group car sales for 2021. So what should we look at first? Well, you have to consider the tense you're going to use. Mostly data is history. It comes from the past. You can have a chart looking into the future, of course, but mostly we look backwards. We've already got the data. So we would use a simple past tense. For a current year, say like 2023, the year now, we could use the present perfect. And if you want to revise that, I'll leave a link below to my video on the present perfect. What we have to consider as well is the movement of data and its direction. Is it going up or down? Then the speed, quickly or slowly. And then finally, we can make a conclusion. Here's a typical report which you could write about this graph. Sales rose steadily. Rose is a direction, steadily is the speed from January to March where they leveled off in April. They then fell rapidly in June and July to 10 cars per month. I can now draw a conclusion. Car sales were slower in January and July compared with the spring months of April and May. Let's look first at the verbs which talk about direction. Here are the very basic verbs which would let you talk about any of our graphs. Rise, rose, risen for an upward trend. Level off and stabilize for something that doesn't move at all. And fall, fell, fallen for downward trends. Now it would be pretty boring if you just use those. So let's have a look at some synonyms to spice it up a little bit. Rise, climb, rose, escalated, risen and jumped are all upward movements. Fall, decline, fell, slumped, fallen, tumbled are all downward movements. Just using the basic verbs, this is what I could say. In February, sales rose from 10 to 12 cars. And notice here I'm looking directly at the graph and taking information from it. You should do that if you're talking about a graph or certainly answering an exam question. Sales leveled off in April. Sales fell from April to May. And we could use the synonyms in a similar way. Sales climbed in March to 45 cars. Sales escalated from January to March. Sales tumbled from April to July and sales slumped from April to July. Now let's see if we can add some more information to make our presentation more interesting. We can add in some useful information to show how quickly or slowly the data are moving. Here we can use adjectives or adverbs. The adjectives are fast, rapid, dramatic, slow and steady. And the adverbs, which remember follow the verb, quickly, rapidly, dramatically, slowly, and steadily. And we can make nouns from our verbs, which are very useful. To fall, a fall. To rise, a rise. To slump, a slump. And to decline, a decline. Now let's look at how we actually use them. With an adjective noun combination, there was a rapid rise in sales from March. It tells us how fast the rise was. It was rapid. The verb adverb combination, sales rose rapidly in March. And it's good to put these adverbs after 
the rise or fall word which you're going to use. Now we can write our report like this. Sales rose steadily from January to March, where they levelled off in April. They then fell rapidly in June and July to five cars per month. Car sales were slower in January and July compared with the spring months of April and May. And you notice the last sentence uses one of our nouns from verbs. There was a fall in sales from April to July. That makes it much more interesting. But there are one or two more phrases you can use. For sales that rise rapidly, you can use the idiom sales skyrocketed in March. Sales took a hike in March and sales reached a peak. If the sales are going the other way, downwards, fairly quickly, you can say sales nosedived in July. Remember, it's important to talk about the data in a graph so you can draw conclusions from the figures that you see. And you can use phrases like this. For a percentage increase or decrease, sales increased by 20% in February. Doubled, sales more than doubled in March. Halved, sales halved in May. You have to study the figures fairly closely to draw those conclusions. Now we have a lot more information to write our report about the graph. We can talk about the direction, the speed, the data, and we can draw a conclusion. So we could write something like this. Sales skyrocketed from January to March, where they leveled off in April. This included a 20% increase in February. Following a busy April, sales halved in May. They then fell rapidly in June and July to five cars per month. Car sales were slower in January and July compared with the spring months of April and May. And then we can use our noun phrase at the end. There was a fall in sales from April to July. So you can see by using some basic verbs and their synonyms, some adjectives and some adverbs, oh, and the odd idiomatic phrase, how you can write a really interesting report about any graph. So if you found my lesson interesting, could I ask you to please subscribe below and ring that bell. Thanks. Now let's have a look at some true false statements about a graph. Exercise one, say whether the statements are true or false in the graph below. The answers follow. Exercise 1 Answers Next time, we should have a look at conditional sentences. That's sentences that use the word if. So, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.